to quote everybody's favorite president in basically in all of history, this is not hyperbole. This is not a joke. The walls really do look like they're about to start closing in on District Attorney Alvin Bragg. And I think pretty soon, even the most Trump deranged radical Democrat will clearly see that the Trump Stormy Daniels hush money misdemeanor case is nothing more than just a clear example of selective prosecution. And I've said it numerous times in numerous videos, but I'll repeat it because it's really, really important. Alvin Bragg has downgraded 52% of all the felonies committed in Manhattan down to misdemeanors. And he's dropped so many misdemeanors that there's no way to get a clear factual number of just how many people he has let off the hook for whatever crimes they allegedly committed, right? And yet, in the case of a leading presidential candidate, he has upgraded an expired eight-year-old misdemeanor with another misdemeanor that he can't even prove, also eight years old and expired, which is exactly why he didn't charge it. But he's used those two to create 34 individually stacked felonies. And now, now there can be absolutely no question what this is all about. And we have the Jew-hating college crazies to thank for that because the campus trespass, damage, occupation, whatever you want to call it, all the crimes that were committed at Columbia and other New York universities, it looks like those are going to go unpunished as well, which is not a bit, not a real big surprise. It becomes a more serious crime, but we'll see. We'll see if Bragg, the DA who is going after Donald Trump for a non-crime, will let these kids get away with committing a crime. It wouldn't surprise me, which is why on Hannity last night, I suggested that uh, lawyers should volunteer, and many already have, to join a group which I have called uh, Heard a Jew, We Sue You, so that we can uh, bring lawsuits against these thugs, um, uh, these uh, Hamas supporters. Uh, you have a right to support Hamas. You have a right to say we are Hamas. I'm not sure you have a right to be a student at Columbia University or to get a job after uh, university if you make outrageous statements like that. Uh, but you do have a right to make those statements. And and not be convicted of crime. But you have no right to break into a building. You have no right to trespass. You have no right to, to <clears throat> cause damage uh, in the building. And you certainly have no right to keep two janitors uh, uh, hostages uh, for several hours before you let them out. O.J. Simpson went to jail for, for that exact crime. Um, he, there was a gun involved there, obviously, and there was no gun involved here. But it doesn't matter under the Law generally, if you by force um, keep somebody from leaving, that's another serious crime. So we'll see if there's any any prosecution. Uh, if it's up to um, District Attorney Bragg, uh, he just you know seems to be very clear that he goes after people he doesn't like and doesn't go after people he likes. But let's see, maybe he'll maybe he'll have a change of heart. Maybe he'll go after these people. But if he doesn't, um, you know, I think we have to. Uh, make sure that they don't uh, they don't get away uh, with it. Um, and um, one way of assuring that is bringing civil lawsuits. And you can under the Civil Rights Act. <clears throat> under the Civil Rights Act, it is a federal crime. You can bring it in federal court. Um, you can. It's also a federal tort um, to conspire with others to deny somebody their civil rights based on religion or or race. And that's what what's happened here. Um, there is a conspiracy. There's no doubt in my mind. And the conspirators include the people who paid uh, for these, um, many of them, illegal demonstrations. Um, and um, it's a nationwide conspiracy. Uh, these things didn't just pop up accidentally. Uh, signs seem to be the same. The tents seem to be uh, the same, at least in many, many areas. And so I suspect there are, as Mayor Adams said, um, <clears throat> outside uh, people involved in organizing and encouraging these kinds of uh, <clears throat> unlawful protests. And one thing good about a civil lawsuit is you get discovery. So um, we'll sue uh, if we can find a plaintiff who was hurt. Uh, it could be Jewish or not Jewish, doesn't really matter. But if you find the plaintiff who was hurt and you find the person who hurt that person, um, and we can do it by facial identification, we can do it uh, by getting the names of people who were 
arrested. Um, and if we find the plaintiff and a defendant, we will file a lawsuit. And if that lawsuit survives a motion to dismiss it, which it will, um, then um, we get discovery. We find out who paid for the tent. Uh, we find out uh, what's on the emails. Uh, we find out a great many things that we now don't really know. And so a civil lawsuit has the virtue of, of discovery, whereas a criminal case, it's up to the prosecution. If the prosecution doesn't want to bring it, it disappears. Even if they do want to bring it, they, they can issue subpoenas or not as they choose. We have no control over that. Whereas if you bring a civil lawsuit, we do have control uh, over that. And so I think a civil lawsuit is the remedy. And I've mentioned I've already gotten about 25 volunteers, uh, lawyers, including some from big law firms and um, one who used to work for Columbia um, and uh, others who just uh, many non-Jews who said, look, we can't stand what we're seeing on campuses and what they're doing. Uh, to students and closing down the universities and threatening and harassing. UCLA broke out into fights and the police didn't come for three hours. And even the governor, uh, Governor Newsom, is upset in California about why the police didn't respond more quickly, really leaving it to the Jewish students to fend for themselves and engage in, in, in self-defense. Um, um, when I was a very young lawyer, I represented the Jewish Defense League and they would teach kids self-defense. Um, um, in fact, their motto was every Jew at 22. I hope we never get back to that because I would like to see the police take primary responsibility for protecting anybody, no matter what their ethnicity is, no matter what their uh, background, no matter what their religion, no matter what their political affiliations, Zionist or non-Zionist. So uh, we'll, we'll see. By the way, speaking of Zionist and non-Zionist, <laughs> He's absolutely right. I mean, come on, man. Alvin Bragg, I mean, it's clear. It is absolutely clear. He does not prosecute the people that he likes, and he does prosecute people who hold the wrong politics, basically. I mean, we've seen example after example after example of it. And now now we get to see exactly where he's at with these college campus protesters or whatever they are. I mean, they're criminals, a lot of them. And, and guys, I mean, think about this. How sick is this to think about? We live in a time... Or if you're a radical leftist, you can kidnap someone, you can burglarize and destroy property. You can do literally anything you want to prove and express your hate for Jews or conservatives or whoever you want, really, whoever doesn't fit the mold. And you're going to be protected. You'll be protected by our own government officials. You'll be hailed as a hero in a lot of cases. And if you're Jewish and you just want to feel safe, you want to feel protected, you want to have criminals held accountable for the crimes they've committed against you, you have to sue. You have to do it yourself under the Civil Rights Act. I mean, that is freaking sick. I mean, that is absolutely sick, man. But this is just the most recent insane reminder of what living in Joe Biden's America really means. But that's just my take, man. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.